Welcome to the Real Time Fantasy Sports Show. I'm Jeff Power, senior writer for Real Time Fantasy Sports. And I'm going to be joined again, once again, by my coworker, Logan Glasser, today. And we're going to give you our waiver wire picks for week one of the NFL season. Believe it or not, week one is right around the corner. I know still a lot of you are drafting, but the season's going to start, and a lot of you are going to run waivers before the season. So we're going to give you our picks for this week. I'm going to bring Logan up now. Logan, thanks so much for joining me once again. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Jeff. Yeah, excited for football start. We got two days away. Two days away, and a lot of our tournaments are wrapping up as well, Logan. Most of them are sold out. The Fantasy Championship still available. Those drafts end as the first game starts on Thursday, though. So if you want to get into that, you got to do it, do it sooner than later, correct? Correct, yeah. I'll go ahead and wrap up Thursday right before the game starts. I believe 5 p.m. Eastern time is less chance to get in one of those tfc drafts okay and the rest of our contest though the most of the tournaments are sold out but we have other leagues you can get in as well though you know our all-american leagues our dime best ball all sorts of different options and we run those up until the games start on sunday correct or correct yeah you can actually join any of those leagues probably up until week six of the nfl season they'll be open all throughout as long as it's popular enough they'll be up in the lobby so go ahead and join one of those leagues awesome so, again, we're going to do waiver wire every week. We're going to do this, Logan. We're going to call it our wavering uh, video for the week, and we're going to give you some options to consider. This first week is always kind of tricky because, uh, you know, games haven't been played yet. There hasn't been a lot of injuries uh, in the preseason. There were a few, but uh, for the most part, nothing too catastrophic. But there's still some options out there if you want to consider them, especially if you want to use them for this week. So, uh, let's get right into it, Logan. How about QB? What? Who's a couple options for you this week? Yeah, two options I'm going to be streaming this week is Jameis Winston and Mitchell Trubisky, which personally I don't want to start out with either of these for my week one team. But if I had to stream one of these, I would probably go Jameis Winston. He's currently 73% owned in RT Sports Leagues. Um, he's facing an Atlanta defense. It's going to be a high-scoring game. In that contest, um, he's got a couple different weapons this year compared to like last year. He's got Michael Thomas, Olave, and then you've also got Kamara. So I expect the Saints offense to be much better this year. And then my other option is Mitchell Trubisky. He's only 15% owned in RT Sports Leagues. In 2018, 2019, he was actually a top 15 fantasy quarterback just because of his legs. I mean, he's got the capability to run. He's playing Cincinnati. Um and he's not a terrible fantasy quarterback to have just because of the ability to run. Running quarterbacks have such a huge value with fantasy. Again, I don't want to start either one of these based off of um, week one. You're coming in with a good quarterback. But if I had to stream two quarterbacks, it would be these two. It would probably be a really good DFS play to look at Trubitsky. Yeah, that's a good call. Again, you can look at these options for DFS too. That's a Good idea, Logan. I got a couple guys, too, at QB. My first one's Baker Mayfield. Uh, he's healthy for the first time in a while. We had a lot of hype surrounding him in Cleveland. Just didn't pan out. But he's got great weapons in Carolina. He has Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey. So if you look at the team around him, it's probably the best he's ever had uh, in terms of surrounding talent. We know he has a lot of talent also. So I think this could be his breakout year. If he's ever set up for a breakout season, this could be it. a lot of great options at QB this year. But if you're looking in deeper leagues and you want to take a chance on somebody, I'd, I'd, I'd give Mayfield a shot. He's available in 67% of leagues on our side as well. Another one for me is Jared Goff. Uh, five games last year, he had 22 plus fantasy points and he did not have a very good surrounding cast outside of Amon Ross St. Brown. Hawkinson had some injury issues. Swift was injured at times too, but all those guys are out there on the field right now. DJ Shark to St. Brown, Hawkinson, Swift, pretty good surrounding talent for golf, in my opinion, available in 68% of leagues as well. So he's another guy, if you're really desperate, if you want to, you know, look at a, a streaming option for this week, I would consider him. Let's look at running backs now, Logan. How about a couple running backs uh, on the waiver wire for this week? Yeah, two running backs I'm looking at is Zamir White and J.D. McKissick. Um, Zamir White actually might be the most popular pickup for a week one waiver. I personally think he's 59% owned coming into leagues after the recent uh, cutting of Kenyon Drake, who everyone thought was going to be the backup for Jacobs. Um, Zamir White is rookie coming in with huge potential, and he's going to be sl slotted into that backup role for the Raiders. Um, most years when we come into week one, there's usually lots of big injuries 
that occur during preseason, we got very fortunate and hardly any injuries. And that's huge for fantasy as well. But I'm going to be looking at Zamir White um, because of that uh, Kenyon Drake um, cut. And my other one is J.D. McKissick. This is also kind of because of an injury with Brian Robinson, um, what happened with him. And Antonio Gibson has not been running the ball great during preseason. They've actually kind of slotted him into a punt returner, kickoff returner role. Um, Gibson will still handle the carries in Washington, but McKissick is such a great pass catching back. I think they're going to get him more involved just because Gibson has been a little shaky to start the year. Yeah, McKissick's kind of guy, I agree, kind of got overlooked uh, because of the emergence of Robinson. But now with him out of the lineup, he's looking a lot better, in my opinion. I got a, a couple different guys for you. My first one, I I think he's kind of been overlooked for whatever reason. But Dante Foreman, he is the backup in Carolina. It is not Chubba Hubbard. Foreman won the job. And if you remember correctly, uh, Foreman looked really good when he was filling in for Derrick Henry last year. So I think he has a lot of potential uh, if he's forced in the lineup. And if you're a McCaffrey owner, I think you have to go grab him. It's not Hubbard. It is Foreman. And Foreman's available in 51% of the league. So some people were aware of the fact that he won the backup job, but not everyone because Foreman's still out there in 51% of leagues. If you own McCaffrey, I'd go grab him before it's too late. My other option is Isaiah Pacheco. He was everybody's favorite late season, uh, late draft, I should say, pickup. A lot of people were drafting him uh, as the season got closer. But for those of you that did early drafts, he was out there in most of your leagues, and he's available in 36% of leagues. So those were drafts that went off a lot earlier. But he's available in 36% of leagues on our site. Looks to be a part of this offense from day one. Could be the number two back. Also, uh, pass catching back, too. So definitely a lot of potential with Pacheco. If he's out there, it's probably the last week you're going to be able to get him. So go grab him. All right, my – Let's go into the receivers now, uh, Logan. How about a couple options on waivers for receivers this week? Yeah, two different options for receivers this waiver period is MBS and Rondell Moore. So with MBS, the Chiefs offense is kind of still unknown. Um, he's coming over from Green Bay. Juju's kind of slotted in to be the number one receiver for KC this year with Tyree Kill gone, but it's still kind of up in the air of who exactly will take over that offense. So it's worth a shot to take on him. He's 68% owned in leagues, and those 32% of leagues that do not have him, worth a shot. Um, can't go wrong with having a high upside on your bench. And yeah. the other one is Rondell Moore. Um, he with DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins suspended the first six weeks. He's going to get a lot of targets early and and do the year. He's got uh, Marquise Brown, who he's going to be competing with. Um, Moore kind of had a disappointing rookie season last year as a for Arizona, but I expect him to kind of jump into a much larger role, especially with Hopkins gone for the first six weeks. Good calls on both those guys. I have more on my sleeper list this week. I'm just writing my column, my lineup prep column, and I put more on my sleeper list, so I like that call. A couple receivers for me. One of them's Isaiah McKenzie with Buffalo. He won the number three receiver job. I think we kind of knew that would happen, but he beat out Jameson Crowder. And remember, when Cole Beasley had this slot job, I know they didn't have really a number two receiver uh, when Cole Beasley was there, but he had 80 plus receptions, two straight seasons for the Bills. So I'm not sure McKenzie's going to produce at that clip with Gabriel Davis there, but I think he's set up for good things and he's available in 66% of leagues. I don't think he's going to be out there long because I think he's going to be involved in this offense quickly. Another guy I really like, an another high powered offense is Josh Palmer with the Los Angeles Chargers. I think he could be hit or miss in this offense as the number three receiver. You know, they have Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, two very good targets, but still. I think he's going to have some big games. I think he's going to be a good producer in the red zone. Uh, he has an act for the big play. Showed that last year. Explosive offense. Available in 60% of leagues as well. So I think Palmer's another guy I would look at if you're not happy with the way you drafted at receiver this year. Let's get into tight ends now, Logan. We're just going to give one for those. Uh, uh, this position's not quite as deep. So give me a, a waiver wire target at tight end for this week. Yeah, tight end, I'm going to be targeting Njoku uh, for Cleveland. He's 56% owned. Um, I really like him. They just signed him to a, a huge, massive extension in Cleveland for the next couple of seasons with a very high dollar amount. So they're going to get him involved frequently with this offense. It does hurt him with Watson being suspended the first 11 games, but for is going to be looking for options and Austin Hooper is gone for Cleveland. So he kind of slots into this number one tight end role all by himself as to, he was kind of sharing that role with Hooper, but now with Hooper gone, I really like the Joku to take a huge step forward with that Cleveland offense. 
Yeah, and I think Njoku could get a lot of looks from Jacoby Brissett, who's kind of had history of targeting a tight end, too. So kind of surprised he didn't get drafted more. Here's mm-hmm. another guy I'm kind of surprised he didn't get drafted more. He's been a target of mine in a lot of my late drafts. But Brevin Jordan with Houston, uh, he looked great in the preseason. He got a lot of looks. Davis Mills looked his way often. I think he's going to have a breakout season as a starter in this offense. They're still looking for playmakers, too, in Houston. Uh, outside of Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins, not much in that passing game. And I think Collins is a little bit of a unsure thing as well. So I think Jordan could be a good safety net for Mills throughout the season. He's available in 88% of leagues. I think as soon as he has a couple big games, he's going to be scooped up and not available in many leagues. So one other thing we're going to do now, Logan, we're going to do this each week, is talk about uh, streaming Uh, defenses for the week so a lot of people like to stream defenses throughout the season they don't want to draft a high dollar one or whatever you want to call it uh, and use a lot of draft capital to get a defense so a lot of people like to stream defenses we're going to give you guys uh, all our our viewers out there each week a streaming defense how about week one streaming defense Logan give us the first one yeah for week one I'm going to be looking at streaming Baltimore Ravens defense they're only about 60 percent owned in RT sports leagues they're going to be playing uh, New York Jets the first week Uh, Zach Wilson most likely will start it's still kind of up in the air because with Joe Flacco and Zach Wilson's injury but Wilson turns the ball over very frequently as we know especially and Ravens got a very good defense so I expect them to get a lot of points week one It, it kind of surprised me how low owned the Ravens were on on RT sports with how their history of their defense has been so good. Yeah. I think the big reason was they were decimated by injuries last year and they had a horrible year defensively. So I think people kind of just overlooked them. And I have a similar option for my streaming defense, Tennessee Titans, another team had a lot of injuries. They really disappointed last year on the defensive side of the ball, but they got better as the season progressed. They had double digit fantasy points, two of their last five games. They play the Giants and Daniel Jones, the other New York team with a turnover-prone quarterback. Daniel Jones, you never know what you're going to get with him. So I think Tennessee could be a good play this weekend. They're available in 85% of leagues in our site. Wow, that's a great option to stream. Yeah, owned on just 15%. And on DFS, too, would be another uh, option to look at them. I'm not sure we have them listed as a price, but I'm I'm sure they're pretty cheap. So something to consider if you're looking at streaming defense. All right, Logan, thanks for joining me. Uh, the, our first wavering show of the week, of the year, I should say. A lot of fun. We're going to do this every week, uh, give you some waiver wire options. I'm sure they'll be plentiful next week as uh, somebody's going to have a huge game nobody thought of, and they're going to be people are going to be throwing all their money at the waiver wire. To yes, get week two waivers are always usually one of the craziest waivers because all the players get overhyped after the one week, but we'll see how it goes. Yep, definitely. All right, Logan, thanks again for joining me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Jeff. This has been Jeff Power for Real-Time Fantasy Sports. And this has been Logan Glasser from Real-Time Fantasy Sports. Have a great day, everyone.